From We Are Spectacular, this is a Spectacular Marketing Podcast. A podcast about everything brand, marketing, digital and social for the food, drink and hospitality industry and beyond. So I'm sitting in Z Hotel in Victoria and I usually try and stay here if I'm staying up in town on my travels from Brighton. And what's great about the hotel is it's super budget in terms of its price tag, but the service, the welcome nature of all of the team and also the amazing deal they have between 5pm and 8pm, which is constant free cheese and wine if you want to get into that, is quite incredible and something to behold. So it shows that no matter the level of your hotel, you really can give a five-star service, even if it is at three-star prices. Today, though, we're talking about luxury, and it's with the incredible Jonathan Raggett. And Jonathan is the managing director at Red Carnation Hotels. And this is just a world away from anything that you've ever experienced in terms of hospitality anywhere in the world. And Red Carnation Hotels is this incredible family of boutique hotels around the world, everywhere from London to Dublin to Palm Beach, Geneva and Guernsey. Jonathan talks us through what it means to have a worldwide estate of amazing venues and hotels, but also Jonathan talks about what it takes to be a people-driven business and also be top of trip advisor time and time again. He's a wonderful human being, he's hospitality personified, and I really, really, really enjoyed catching up with him after what's been probably a few years since we sat down and broke bread together. So it gives me the most amount of pleasure ever to have an incredibly smiley man um, in front of me with when... Not quite the whole hog, but the half hog uh, for a slightly swankier studio today. Um, And I welcome and bring to you Mr. Jonathan Raggett. Thank you, Mark. It's great to be here. And thank you for my swanky studio here. It's great. It's nice and and cool. And what's your grand title these days? Emperor of? (laughs) I'm the managing director of Red Carnation Hotels. That's right. right. (laughs) So welcome, um, the greatest group of hotel brands in the world, isn't it? I think we were number two, actually. Uh, Is it? (laughs) (laughs) Yes. After who? Uh, Six Senses came top. Uh, We were below them. But I'll I'll take I don't with, think I know them. Uh, Reincarnation. That's the one <laughs> so we've known each other for seven, six, six, six years, something like this. Yep. And how that. did we get introduced through Susie? Maybe? Susie, yeah, I think uh, the VP of uh, Marketing Revenue. She she put us together, and uh, you're one of those. Got your instable likable. You are instable, like, <laughs> instable, grammable, likable. <laughs> Um, yeah. Well, yeah, so I used to work with Susie at, um, at lastminute.com, um, which you get booed for nowadays as your your horrible aggregator that <laughs> takes people's commission and b- budgets and margins and things like that. Um, but yeah, so we shout out to Susie, um, who did a wonderful podcast with... Uh, Lately, she did a podcast. She did, I think. Yeah, I haven't so, listened to it yet. Yeah, but she I, has need, done it, I yeah. need to do it and promote it. So I, I promised her I would do that. And there's a new um, curry... Restaurant at, at the, the Rubens. At the Rubens. The Rubens think... has a fantastic curry room, an unbelievable yeah. curry room. We found this chef, uh, where we found him from, I'm not sure. He's super brilliant, and the front of house is great. Um, can I talk about the Rubens, or have I got to wait? Go for it. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so the Rubens now um, is officially an AA five-star hotel. It was, it was four-star for many years, so it's five-star, and rightly so. Uh, it's got the curry room you mentioned. It's also got the English grill, which, which has fantastic traditional cuisine, from uh, carveries to the smoked salmons to just everything that is typically British. Uh, and it's, and it's well-placed because it's right next to... Her Majesty. Yes, at Buck Palace. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah. Um, but very popular, particularly in the evenings, and a fantastic wine list. Again, a great team of people. And then the third restaurant, which sits with the Rubens, is, is Bee Bar. There's Bee Bar, which B-bar. is uh, which is adjacent to, to the hotel. So yeah, yeah. you've got three great dining experiences now when you stay there. And you've got the Leopard stuff going on and then we've got we've got various bars we've got the new york bar which is the main hotel bar yeah, yeah, yeah. and then the, the leopard bar and we're, we're quite famous for our leopard bars we've got seven of those now in the company throughout throughout the world nice 
right? Very on trend. Very on trend. <laughs> yes. No, it, the B bar used to be quite a big spot for the, the lastminute.com crew because our offices were close by. So we used to go there quite often. A few heady nights in there. So no, check it out if you can. So yeah, there's a, a few of those. But yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll run through the... The family of hotels, yeah, some I got to, some I wasn't invited to, <laughs> the, the ones further afield. Um, so, yeah, so I guess it was to start talking about you as well. And so you were saying just there before we, we started recording, you're um, 20 years in your job. So what, before that, how did you get to... Oh, well, well, when I was a 12-year-old, I, I was going <laughs> to score the winning World Cup goal for, for England, I hasten to add. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but <laughs> when, I, when I reached the age of 15, I realised that dream perhaps wouldn't come true. <laughs> and uh, I had a few uh, pals who were a little older than me, and they got into this uh, hospitality business. And uh, one of the guys was working for Trust House 40 in those days. And... Uh, I just like what I saw. I like the glitzy chandeliers. I like the restaurants, like the people's angle. And, and I took a healthy interest in, in everything hospitality. And I got to the age of 16. I went to do my A-levels. I didn't do terribly well in my A-levels. Um, but I'd already known by then I wanted to be a hotelier. So I, uh, I applied for, for various uh, things I thought would help me and I ended up at Westminster uh, University as it is now and, and I had a, a hotel national diploma okay. in, in hotel management I did that for as a three-year course and did a work placement in Paris and um, ever since I've, I've been in the business um, I did a, a management program um, and I worked as, as a bottle wash I worked in housekeeping and I worked my way through yeah. and I think actually in this business it's really important you understand all facets of the yeah. business I think uh, if you don't, you can't really run a, a hotel properly. Yeah. And what about Paris then? I mean, that must have been yeah, it was, incredible. I, I, it was a six-month placement that George sank. Um, and, and that was fabulous. Um, you know, we all went to, to these great five-star hotels to do our, our work experience. We're all terribly excited then to, to leave our, our placements and, uh, uh, and, and get on and work. Um, and I actually joined a UK company which no longer exists and uh, that also gave me a, a, an opportunity to travel and I think this business and I think one of the other attractions to this business which again so many young people don't seem to appreciate it gives you an opportunity to travel uh, there are hotels everywhere in the world to, to state the obvious uh, and the other thing about this business uh, and again it is overlooked by parents and certainly the, the, the children is that if you work hard mm. if, if you care um, you can really get to a fairly senior position at a young age yeah. and uh, so many general managers make it in terms of being a general manager by 30 years old yeah. and certainly by 40 and you're looking after a business with several hundred people turning over tens of millions of pounds mm -hmm. and uh, it's you certainly don't get that in all industries no and I think there's a big job for all of us to do to really champion the industry there's such a shortage and you know it's briefs we're getting in D&D &D out which is we don't have enough chefs, we don't have enough GMs, we don't have enough front of house, we don't have enough... And, you know, and it is that mum and dad test that, you know, not enough people are still considering... There was a little rock and roll phase where it was so much on the TV of the chef thing and the, all the documentaries about hotels, and but still it just doesn't seem to be cutting through enough that it's a viable, sexy enough option, you know, so... Yeah. I, there's definitely a job for all of us to do to get out there and promote it for sure. Uh, 100%. And just sort of, you know, to, if proof is needed, um, I, I I was parents of, uh, of uh, the school my son goes to were asked to come and do a, a careers night. So mm. we all went along and then 16, 17 year olds came along to uh, to, to speak to the parents who with, with their businesses that they ran. And of course there were pilots, there were bank managers, investment fund managers and, and, and uh, so many different careers. Yeah. And we all had this little table we sat behind and we were marked around a big sports hall. And I sat there in my chair and on one side of me was an investment banker uh, and on the other side of me was some high profile answer uh, person. So, so all these 16, 17 year olds came in and they got a program beforehand to say who was where and what the business was. Right. So I was ready for action, Mark. I thought there they were, the queue would be a mile long. So it was a two hour session, this, and I sat there and after half an hour, no one had come to me mm -hmm. and the lines for all the <laughs> businesses were really quite long. 
And then 45 minutes passed, and I'm a little bit embarrassed by this. Not totally unexpected, but I thought there may have been a few. And uh, a few of the boys that were there brought their, their parents along. Uh, this one mother dragged her son and said, this looks interesting, hospitality, hotel management. And she dragged him to, to my table. I thanked her for it. And uh, she said, uh, Johnny, let's say, you're interested in hotel management, aren't you? And he said, no, I'm not, mum. <laughs> <laughs> and so it wasn't a terribly long conversation and i think that was living proof if needed yeah. that there's still so much to be done yeah. for people to realize and look i speak of myself i've only done hospitality only done hotel management but i do not have monday morning blues yeah i've got schoolmates that i still keep in touch with that have the banking type roles they have the insurance type roles and and they're miserable on monday yeah, mornings in yeah. fact all they long for all they long for is friday at five o'clock yeah and it and it, and they don't really switch off, you know. So they might be on their boat or their holiday home in Geneva or going to the, but they are not detached from the phone or the stress. Or you know, so there's a there's a mental impact as well. So the bank balance might be good, and they yeah. might have the fancy watch, and then it, so yeah. So I think the thing that drew me to that hospitality industry was you were in the business of making people happy, right. which you know, and then what came from that was the people that were in the industry were happy people too, in the main. You know, so there was that nice sort of virtuous circle sure. of happiness, you know, which I think was quite exciting. And then also, you know, someone that just popped into my head, there's um, a, a chap at the, I think it's the Georgian House Hotel uh, down in Pimlico, and he's like became this kind of, a bit of a superstar GM, you know, and he's put himself about a bit. Um, it's Adam, I think, yeah. I'm going to pronounce his name wrong, I think it's Adam Rowledge, and he's putting himself out in a bit. But again, I think it's people like that really pushing themselves, working the long hours, being very visible, really on social media, getting up for awards, things like that. And people of the that age then being peer-to-peer -peer promoting hotels yeah. as an option, sure. I think could be a good thing. So, yeah, yeah, I go with that. I would just say, like I say as well, that I think if you want to get to the top in any business mm. it is about working hard isn't it and it isn't about nine to five and i think it's a bit of a myth that the hospitality business is such rotten hours yes mm. i mean i think it is part of our business that we need to be there but you know if i leave my office let's say at eight o'clock on an evening i still see many of the banking fraternity that i've used before working hard heads down so i think you know to, to get on in life you've got to work yeah, hard yeah, yeah. definitely and you know, I'm no different. You know, I'm I'm sometimes packing up at 11 at night. So it depends. And I think you've just got to, yeah, you've got to put the hours in. But I, I think it is that what's, what's, what's your dream? What makes you tick? And if you're a people person and you want to make people happy and you want to be part of, you know, there's nothing better than making someone's day. And, and I think the people that you've got and, the engagement that they have with the guests, for example, you know, and a story, you know, when I worked for you guys a little bit, you know, I sat in when Susie was mm. off having her baby and stuff, you know, back then, you know, in the marketing department, and I went to visit one of your places, you know, and I got a taxi, uh, I think I was staying at Chesterfield, maybe, um, and I went along, and they opened the taxi door, and the doorman said, Good evening, Mr. McCullough. And I was like, what the what? And people have been briefed, right? But I was just like, whoa, what the? And it just went on from there. And you were just like, and the fact that, you know, you were researching your guests, you were so savvy and it was all those little things, but it was hiring people on their aptitude to so, care and go that extra mile was just, it's so self-evident. Yeah. Was yeah, I think that's really the differential between any hotel. If you're looking at a luxury hotel, the beds are comfortable, so the the the, the bath uh, mats and the bath robes are fluffy because that's that's what you know five star hotels do. I think you know having the right people that are on your side that are with you wanting to help, caring that you have a great time, really is the difference. And we live in a world, don't we, Ma? I have to tell you this, but we live in a world now of uh, user-generated content. And um, I've, I've found over my years, A, that it's hugely important. But when, when a guest has a fabulous time, mm. um, they want to ride it. And clearly, if they have a, 
bad time, they want to write about it. I've also discovered that if people have a bad time, they do tend to exaggerate how bad it was by 20, 30%. Mm. But the rub is, and the good news is, that when someone has a spectacular stay, they also exaggerate that by 30%. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I think the pressure is on all of us now that you can't, every person has a say. Guests know they have a say. Yeah. But If you're in the world of trying to do your best and you want to be consistent, one shouldn't fear that. In yeah. fact, that should excite. Yeah. And, you know, me for one is I'm brutally competitive. <laughs> and so, you know, I work hard to ensure that our team understand their roles. Mm -hmm. and we empower them. We give them a chance to do whatever it takes to make that guest stay a very special one. And it doesn't matter whether it's business or leisure. In fact, it's very different, uh, very difficult, I should say to actually know what the difference is today yeah. because one kind of merges into the other yeah. um, people on their vacations are taking laptops and doing a bit of work etc mm -hmm. so every guest and of course it's not one shoe fits all yeah. everybody's got their little touches what yeah. they like and what they dislike and I, i love it it excites me putting that whole jigsaw together that every day you want to fill every single room yeah. at the maximum rate you can you want to fill the restaurant chairs the bar chairs and, and you want to max the revenues of course because that's what a business is yeah. but on the other side of it you want every customer to be happy because you know i always say to people two happy guests today make four happy guests tomorrow well that's an interesting point um Because um, it was something I was talking about, at, you know, a, a speechy thing the other day, and it was a chef. I, I can't remember who the chef was, which is annoying. So I'll, I'll, I'll misquote that. But um, they said it's not one or two people coming for dinner anymore. It could be 300 or 3,000 because of social media. So when you're saying it's, you know, two happy guests or four happy, actually, it's it could be four, you know, with them posting that picture, you yeah. know. Um, it could be incredible. Um, we're jumping about a bit from Gabby's lovely questions, but that's a good thing. So we we, we might ditch that a little bit and we'll, we'll come back to these because you're touching on some great stuff. So I think what's so neat about Red Carnation Hotels for me is all of the customer stories and what you do. And I wonder if you had some favourite examples of you know, the lengths that you've went to for some customers, you know, just that stick in your mind over the two. I've, I mean, I've got some actually that, that I can recount secondhand that I heard from people, but just some special stuff when people came to stay. Yeah, I think the special stuff is important for us day, and, and I think we do a very good job of doing the special stuff. I, I just like to sort of, from the outset though, point out that one has to get the basics right one can't just do all the frilly bits around it give a cake for a birthday and, and, and offer lousy service around it so i think the very basics of hotel keeping is that when you check in it's quick it's it's efficient when you order room service it is quick it's efficient when you check out you're not queuing your bags arrive so i just want to sort of get rid of that myth that you just do a couple of extra what we call tnts tiny noticeable touches mm. and everything Thing will be all right because it absolutely won't be and i think there's a little bit of a sort of line there you've got to get things right before you put all the the frills etc together but we we do a lot to ensure we do just extra bits and pieces so yeah we do a little bit of research on our guests we very much keep our guest history together so if we know somebody likes something in particular then we will we ensure that when they come back then we, we we've got whatever that was and uh, we challenge and, and please take this the right way we, we challenge our housekeeping staff to also in the rooms observe what the guests may have so if there's a, a golf clubs or if there's a golfing magazine then it would suggest that guest likes golf so on a return stay we'll get something which is golf related for that guest and they haven't actually told us necessarily that it was golf mm. but we've actually picked that up and again we've got little schemes that that we go through to, to make that happen so really I mean, there are lots of stories and some big stories that, that we've done. And uh, But I think the day-to-day -day stuff is just it's the small things. The small, even, even your mention of the taxi door was open and I knew my name. Um, it, 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 pe pe people find that very special. Walking into a bar for your second tire, second stay and knowing that it's a Tanqueray and tonics, your favourite drink, is, 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 is people like it. And the reason they like it and the reason we do quite well is so few places actually seem to get that right. Yeah. 
Yeah. And it, it was even, you know, I, I stayed in another hotel, I'm sorry, last night. But it was so cool that I didn't feel like I was checking out a prison where they're asking me to recount what I had from the minibar. I didn't have to have that awkward. So what did you have? Uh, uh, yeah, sorry, I had the Kit Kats <laughs> and I had the M&Ms. I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm Scottish and greedy. And, you know, uh, you know, it was just, it didn't matter. They're like, yeah, we've got some stuff in the minibar. We'll fix it and we're just going to email you and it's fine. You know, uh, just that was it, you know, because usually in the types of, well, usually the types of hotels I stay in don't have minibars, but, um, you know, keep keep the cost low at Weir's Hotel. But, you know, <laughs> but if you do, it is, it's that exchange. And you're just like, oh, come on, you know. Um but that was always quite a good thing. But I think um, another thing with one of my, my stays at your places was the generosity of the... And I'm just looking at a couch behind you, actually. The the bath accessories uh, wicker basket was about the size of the couch with not just any bath stuff. This is Penhaligans and, you know, all of the best luxury items you could ever think of and it's not you'll feel guilty about maybe sticking the odd it's yours you do what you want and and i think because there's that trust then you don't you know you because you just think oh god i'm not gonna um and also even when i was having dinner with you guys um someone came through to the to the little you know one of the bars i was having a, a, a drink with um which i think was a tankery and tonic <laughs> by the way um and um and then I ordered my stuff, and then the barman came through. I hear you're having this. Here's the three wines I suggest that might go with this. Would you like to... What? <laughs> I've just, like, absolutely never seen anything like that in my sure. life. And, you know, the cost to the actual business to give a little taste of some wines before you try them is is, is so small, and the perceived value is perhaps a little larger. But it's those it's, it's generous hospitality, we call it. We In all of our, our bars on an evening, for an hour or so early evening, we, we take this, this sort of spicy cheese toast around, fingers of it, and, and we, we give it around. There's nothing very remarkable about it. It tastes jolly good, and it's warm, and it's cheesy, and it's all the things that you like. But people often comment about it mm. so it's actually taking very little time we have the sweetie jars throughout our hotels top to the and we, we fill those up every day and people take you know 10 if they want 20 if they want. it doesn't really matter it just it, it, it's about being generous giving things we, we charge quite a lot of money in our bars for drinks as all five star hotels do so let's give some nice nibbles with that let's give mm. some nice snacks with it in addition to the cheese toast so I think about it, it's just about giving a little bit more um, and, 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 and having what you would like if I sit down and i've ordered an ice drink what would i like well actually i would love some cashew nuts and, and you know a few few crisps would be nice and and whatever it may be is to give the guests that and yeah. you know we have uh, afternoon tea and we, we're very generous with our afternoon tea but if we, we offer more scones more cake if you want it and we, we we do a lot of training to our teams to try and get them to understand and be on the side of the guest and last week, and I would like to quickly tell you this story, if I may, Mark. Sure. I was, um, I was at one of our restaurants. It was actually at the Montague Hotel, and um, I was with a travel agent, and we were having a nice dinner. But I'm, I'm terrible when I'm eating in any restaurant, particularly if ones I'm responsible for. I'm a bit of a meerkat. I'm always looking around left, right, and centre to see what's going on. And there was this couple next to me. Uh, seemed to be having a very nice meal and they finished their main course and, and the waiter went to them and said uh, would you like to have one of our delicious desserts and he sort of started to explain and and the lady said no i never have desserts but that didn't stop him then from uh, att attacking the man to see what he might like and he said well i love desserts so of course the waiter was excited by that and he said i can't make my mind up he said whether i should go for the honeycomb ice cream or the creme brulee at which point the waiter said, I will make you know, I will make the decision for you. So I'm watching and I'm quite interested. So he disappears and five minutes later he comes back with two desserts, two spoons, him and her, and and, and, and puts them in the table. And the lady was good to her words because she didn't touch the desserts. He ate both of them, every single bit of both. Now the rub in this story is at the end of the check. He was charged for one dessert. For one? Oh. So 
he is like saying to his wife, look, I've only been charged for one. She's saying, well, you shouldn't have had two and three. No, she's saying that. <laughs> nice. yeah. but, but he's gone away, hasn't he now? And he feels that we have given him a huge amount. Well, we've been generous. But again, the cost of that second dessert is probably costing me pence, yeah, certainly yeah. less than a pound in cost. Yeah, yeah. But the value that has done to our business, and I, I was really chuffed with him. And of course, I did yeah. make a point because to... I want my tea. It doesn't mean that everybody now comes to a red carnation hotel and has two desserts. <laughs> it, it, it was that moment that was that was <laughs> right. <for> one single. <laughs> no, I just I just was worried that the chap had done the wrong thing and you'd clatter them. No, no, there, quite. You know? I, one of the hardest things I have, Mark, in in the business is trying. I don't know why, but trying to get the the teams to give away things. So there seems to be this sort of inbred thought that they are wasting company monies if they give a bit more and i, I work harder on it the management mm. team do that of course if we if we give a bit extra if we, we give that that'll cost the company and i don't know why people think like that because it's not costing them yeah 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 but you know i suppose in a way it's quite good they're defending the company but of course they're not defending their yeah. it's, it's worse so yeah it's a big big part of it yeah. and obviously my man there at the montague had uh, had really picked that up yeah. and uh, i was thrilled but i guess i guess you're thinking short term cost versus long term brand value totally and you know it could it could have went quickly the other way which was it turned into bill shock which then was a complaint <laughs> so i think that's fantastic and then so just for anyone that doesn't know about Red Carnation Hotels, the estate, you're, you're across the world. Tell us about that. Yeah. So we're, we're a family-owned business, um, and we're owned by the family that own the travel corporation. So I go to a, a meeting every year of what's called brand leaders. There are 30 of us there. So mm-hmm. we're, I'm 130 of this huge company. Um, so all of the Red Carnation Hotels, the 18, are, are all red cash they're not managed on behalf they're they're all owned by the company um i'm very fortunate that none of them are, are mortgaged they're they're all paid for um so that's done because of the other businesses that s- support red carnation hotels and we have six in, in in london we have a great country house hotel in, in dorset summer lodge two in the channel islands we have an amazing castle in ireland called mm. ashford castle and in the estate of Ashford Castle is the lodge at Ashford, which is a 70 bedroom property too. Um, and then we have G- Geneva. We have the Hotel d'Angleterre overlooking the lake, which uh, again is, is fabulous. Uh, we have a hotel in Florida in Palm Beach. And I then we have, make that one. we have three hotels <laughs> in um, South Africa. And then recently, very recently, um, we've uh, now got a, a property in Botswana and uh, it's Good. just like hot off the press um it's a game reserve we've, we've closed it for a year mm-hmm. it's called uh kidgeray uh it's x-i-g-e-r-a so we pronounce the, the k um so it's closed for a year and uh that's going to be one of the very finest uh game lodges anywhere in the world once it's completed so uh you've got the dams and the rivers and the whole beauty there of botswana so very excited about that too great and and you know, as the MD of all of this, you know, you know, maybe quite interesting and inspirational for, for for people. You know, how do you structure your time then? You know, how do you lead and how do you manage people and uh, yeah, how does all that work? Sure, I think that has been certainly years ago one of my hardest challenges because um, the problem I have self criticism is I do like to be involved in everything and see what's going on yeah. and, and see every guest and see every dish that leaves the kitchens and of course when the company the company's grown to where it is today you do have to sort of let go of it so the secret and it's a rather an obvious thing to say the secret is hiring the right people mm. that you trust that uh, you know are honest with you and you're honest with them and then giving clear defined objectives Mm -hmm. and throughout the company but the way I work things is every 12 weeks I'll sit with the the 18 managers sometimes telephonically with the locations and we'll go through the objectives for the next 12 weeks we'll recap what we said we do 12 weeks ago and what we're going to do going forwards Mm -hmm. and sometimes we miss things uh, sometimes we do more but it gives everybody the understanding of what the expectations are and I stick to that and yes 
maybe there's 15 things on that and are there many many other things to do yes of course there are many other obvious things to do yeah. but if we say we're going to do things um we've got to do them nothing yeah. drives me crazier than talking about stuff and then not executing it and yeah. again the team that work with me for me know that and if we're not going to do something let me know let's not wait for the 12 weeks then to to end and say oh we haven't done this haven't done let, let's communicate let's see where we're going and, and i find that style of management the way to go i don't need to speak to these guys every day i couldn't i wouldn't get anything done but they know that the properties are run properly i've got happy guests we're, we're making our budgets and in addition, we're getting these 12 week objectives completed mm -hmm. or, or not. We can always go we can change our minds on it, but it's a structure. Yeah. And by implementing that, I th think everybody knows where they are. Yeah. I, I hate surprises yeah. and I never, ever wait. I very much wear my heart on my sleeve. Mm. So if I'm upset with something or something's gone terribly wrong, I don't tend to wait. Yeah. <laughs> I have to sort it out yeah, yeah. there and then. Um, and of course, in any business, you get people where occasionally you, you don't meet the, the expectations. Yeah, yeah. And again, I, I won't bore people here now, but we work very strongly on the NPS yeah. and, um, we really want to know whether they'd recommend us to friends, whether so they'd come back. <coughs> Sorry, if you start from uh, NPS. <coughs> Excuse me. So I, I don't really want to bore people on this podcast with NPS, but at Red Carnation, we're very much behind that. And we're wanting to make sure that people will return. They'll recommend us to our friends, their friends. So... You know, that's a big part of where we are. And, and when we get it wrong, we're, we're trying to get people that perhaps slip, dare I say it, below five up into the, the sevens and eights and then they're beyond. So you know, a big, big part of what we're doing, because we just understand today that wherever possible, you've got to ensure we're exceeding the expectations. So is the NPS what you're using for employee scoring as well well as well yeah i was talking in that case for guests yeah, yeah but yeah. for guests yeah for employees we have a, a guest survey um and we have numerous questions but again we we use the mps mm -hmm. and we use that every year to see where we're going and moving up hopefully not down yeah, yeah. With, with our teams and of course the relevance to getting the right people and keeping and keeping the right talent i, I yeah. still say it's harder today to retain talent than it is actually to find it definitely and then what about your traveling then? How are you spreading yourself across all the sites and sure. being there in person as well? Good. Well, I am, um, I, it's never in tablets of stone, um, but I look to get to the, the likes of South Africa and Florida at least twice a year. Um, particularly when it's miserable and cold here in December, sure. you, you need to make sure <laughs> everything's right that. over there. Um, and, um, you know, if there is a bigger issues or a change of manager or something along those lines, there may be a need to do a bit more. Yeah. Um, the, the London properties is not a week would go by. I'm not just uh, touching base and saying hello. Um, I go to Ireland again. It's, it's it's so busy there during the summer. I tend to leave them alone. And, and now as we, we start to get through, I see more well, same with the Channel Islands, you know, once every six weeks or so and i'll do i extend my days always the first flight out and the last one back so again two three days there but i, I work it on these objectives i talk about and yes i walk around and we check things we look at capex we look at the finances you need that face to face again we're starting to get better now that with telephone calls we're doing face to face we're doing yeah. the skypes and i think that's also you know Huge. It's, it's, it's it also helps you at least you know they're looking at you when you're speaking yeah, to them yeah, vice yeah. versa <laughs> Yeah. Um, and you know we have our structured pre P and Ls every month. We have our structured thirty, sixty, ninety day forecast. So you know we touch base on the important. Thing. But I think the reason the management teams, Mark, stay in Red Carnation for the length of time they do is they are empowered. They are given autonomy. They they know what's wanted, and it's get on and make it happen. And, and I'm very proud of that fact. And without being too sycophantic, I genuinely love all of the people that work within the business, and, and hopefully they feel something the same. Um, and we get on. We we know the competition isn't ourselves. The competition is vast out there, and we, 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 we've got to do what we can do and, and help one another with it yeah. and, and have some fun about yeah, it too. Yeah. I mean, life is serious and, and running any business is serious, but you've got to have some laughs about it. And if you don't have a sense of humour and you can't have that fun from time to time, then it is a bit miserable, isn't it? Definitely. And I, I think you can see that in your people, you know, like whether it's in hotel or it's in head office or, you know, support centre or whatever you call it, you know. So you can see people are having a laugh, you know. And, and I think... 
it made me relax a bit, you know, and loosen up, you know, because some clients are going to see it's all a bit tight and serious. And, you know, when I when I went to see, you know, Rich and Susie and stuff, it was all a bit calm and easy and, and nice. But thinking about that competitiveness, though, you know, what about, you know, brand marketing, digital, social? What's happening in your world there? What have you seen change and what are you focusing on there okay. now? Well, I think... You know, to, to the whole marketing department and the way that structured has, has changed probably more than any other um, department in any hotels. Um, it is now online. Um, certainly, the whole mobile mm. side of things, the way people are making their bookings, the fact they want instant responses, the fact that now we had someone in the breakfast room a few months ago saying, "How long have I got to wait for my toast to arrive?" And, and thank goodness we were on the, the Twitter that particular time. We got lucky, and the toast arrived ten seconds later. He tweeted, "Say that's fantastic, it's arrived." But one's got to be aware that we live in a world now where people want instant uh, reaction confirmations yeah. um and i think again going back to what i said if you make a point of actually making it happen and, and you do a great job you just win more points and i'm not sitting here for one second to say we always get it right because we absolutely don't but i think being aware of it not distancing yourself from it mm -hmm. having champions i mean when it comes to the whole social media we have a central team which do take care of it but every hotel has the champions because the central team probably aren't working on a sunday morning at 10 o'clock yeah and so you You've got to be able to respond quickly. So yeah. I think it's exciting times. We still have the paper brochures we're giving out. I yeah. guess we need to move on from it now because we change our pictures. We describe what we're doing, our events and everything else. And of course, the brochure sits there for two, three yeah. plus years. As we know, uh, a website now, it changes. So and we look at demographics of our people and people, oh, we really like a brochure. But and I need to challenge myself now. The cost of putting that brochure together is huge. And if I didn't do a brochure, would I be any less profitable? Probably not are probably more profitable because of the cost of doing it oh, sure. so, so we're in that very interesting time between what we do print and what we don't print yeah. and certainly at red carnation i'm absolutely on board now to be doing what we can to save the planet with our csr activities yeah so uh, that's green carnation that's right, right. Yeah, yeah. Green yeah, yeah. that's right we've set a little section up but i mean we've made a, a statement that uh, we want to get rid of all single-use plastic now within the last mm. in the next 12 months so you know i think we were one of the very first to get rid of straws years ago now so <coughs> we've not got those on board but we've done a whole list of all our hotels and central as to what we need to rid ourselves of plastic and anything else which is harming the environment because i think also our guests people that are staying with us people are eating with us they they also care a lot of them and they want to see what we're doing yeah well it's funny you know i had this thing the other day and i started talking to people about it i've started to notice just eating out a lot and stuff you know when i'm up in london the napkin under the food what's that all about <laughs> and i'm sure it's for stability to help the waiter or waitress or whatever you want to term them these days team member but i'm just like there must be millions of napkins. And I know paper's recyclable and all these types of things, but you're just kind of going, really? Mm. You know, so that, that's that got to be one of the next things, hasn't it? To, yeah, to, to kind of, you know, uh, absolutely. look around. And, uh, you know, I just thought that's got to be something. A paper still is not as disgusting as plastic, though. Oh. That's so, true. So, but you're right. We do. Where where can we we cut back on it? And, and we don't. I mean, newspapers. Uh, I mean, getting on the tubes and buses and the way. Just as metros in the morning and standards at night. The amount of paper. Yeah. Uh, we now offer a digital option. We've still got the newspapers. Those that want. We offer yeah. a digital option. And a lot of people, with their tablets want to take that. Yeah. We are going that way. But yeah, we. Yeah. Quick. But I I saw an article, very unrelated to hotels, but it just uh, it stuck with me that in by 2050. The way things are going, mm -hmm. there'll be more plastic in the sea than fish. Is that true? Apparently so. My, my, my question is, like, just... We were talking about this yesterday, I was with a client, and it's just like, plastic... Well, it's not fine, but if it wasn't getting in the sea, would it be such an issue? It's sort of, the, you know, because that's where it's being harmful. So if it was on land and we were sorting it out in a different way, because mm. it is going to be around for, you know, there's no, there's no way plastic's going to be 
eradicated. You know, it just it's it's kind of unimaginable. No, I mean, I think it's landfill otherwise, isn't it? But the, the stuff just doesn't disintegrate. And I agree, there will be some plastic. I think it's a single-use plastic that mm. I'm on my bandwagon with at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think you're right. But that, that revolting stuff, cling film, which so many kitchens use, and we use it's non-stop. metres and metres of it. It no, is non-stop. non-stop. It's been quite a frightening exercise, in fact, going through just how much of it we use. You get it with delivery. I mean, any takeaway, sorry. Yeah. But, but you get it with, you know, yeah. just not, you know, and it's, and it's round something that is sealed or I know it's to make it super secure but it's I've had it round like a coke bottle that's actually sealed shut that you need a bottle opener and it's like yeah. well that's not going to leak is it and they've already yeah. cling felt in your like no, it's, it's, you it's, it's, and you know, in airports, I was at the airport last week, and you've got those uh, suitcase uh, plastic, you oh, yeah, your suitcase yeah, yeah. and you zip it around. So, so, so anyway, I think we've all got some Ooh. responsibility here to be uh, certainly using less of that single use. Anyway, at Red Carnation, we are, we are doing that. Yeah. And, you know, we, we talk about the teams of people, you know, the whole CSR side of it, the giving back, the green teams, the green carnations. I also find that a lot of our younger team members are very excited about this mm. subject. And uh, it's great because um, their excitement certainly excites me to make sure we are doing a better job. And a lot of our guests pick this up and it all becomes full circle because then our guests start talking about it as well. They want to be part of it. And something at Red Carnation some 10 years ago, is we said to guests that were staying more than one night Mm -hmm. that if uh, on a second night they didn't have their towels washed or their sheets changed um, we'd be grateful because you know we won't be you know destroying the environment which is the one side and every hotel does that now of course but again the difference to what we did is that for every guest that supports us with this we give a pound to great ormond street and starlight foundation here in the uk so 10 years on we're almost up to a million pounds that we at red carnation have given to those two charities for saving monies rather than having those sheets and towels washed during a stay. Fantastic. So it's a real good of sort of given and I think guests sort of I think guests got a little bit fed up when they were thinking, well, does that just mean a bigger house, more holidays for an owner of a hotel because we're not washing it and a cost saving. So that's right. And a bit of cynicism could come in yeah, there. Yeah. But the fact they actually see that, that we've we've done that yeah. and, and our staff love it, our guests like it's just it's just a real feel good factor yeah. there. And, you know, just on that subject, we, we also give all of our team, our staff, and we, we encourage, we don't force, but we certainly strongly encourage them to have two days off per year mm-hmm. to give back. So okay. this is in addition to their holidays. These are full days pay. They can go out mm-hmm. and give back to the community. Okay. So they can go to soup kitchens. They can run marathons. They can do something that's going to make a difference to other people. Mm. And people say to me, but Jonathan, that costs your business a fortune. And I say to them, well, it costs a day's work for sure. But again, the energy that derives from them talking about it amongst their peers, um, talking to our guests about it, mm. more than makes up for it. And yeah. again, it's, it is about keeping talent, as I mentioned. It's about retention. So I think it's all these types of things yeah. which makes people feel part of, of, of the right team. Definitely. And how many, how many staff now? We've got 1,000 in London. And, and across the collection is two and a half thousand people now working for for reincarnation and you know we're not perfect but i think you know our retention levels are are, are far better than most other hotel companies we were 22 yeah. percent turnover last year which is less than half of the industry norm yeah. so high in some industries but for us um that's low and you know i'm very proud of that fact yeah. We certainly don't get complacent. We certainly don't you know, let people have an easy time. They've got to work hard, yeah. but they've got to feel part of it. Yeah. And what about attracting talent then? How are you going about that? Sure. I, and again, I think we, we've got a great management program. Mm-hmm. And um, if I can just say this on myself again, that uh, some 15 years ago, I used to go to the universities and colleges and uh, I would see these bright uh, young people Mm. looking to see where they would like their placements and and the likes of the Four Seasons and perhaps the Dorchester Collection and others would have great lines of people wanting to work for them. And Red Carnation uh, really was, it certainly wasn't flowering in those days. It, It wasn't known. And, you know, I used to pick up a, a few perhaps, but, you know, I, was, I didn't feel at that time I was getting the very best. But today, moving through, 
I go to these events yeah. and, and, and we've got the longest line of people wanting oh, yeah. to, to work with us. And, you know, there's been a few tricks in there. We, we take people that have come from these universities. I've done very well in our, in our collection as they are running management roles. Yeah. They come to the recruitment days. They talk to the students mm-hmm. looking for the placements. They give their journey. Uh, someone like me talking is a bit like a hotel brochure or website. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about everything being fantastic and award winning and everything you'd want it to say. Um, which you'd expect but of course if you're speaking to in inverted commas the real people the people that have done it yeah. the authenticity the whole realness comes to life and, and we've got a very very good management program that yeah. uh, gives people a chance to move on so, so that's that's a, a great way of recruiting people mm-hmm. yeah. finding friends we, we, we give our staff £300 um, to find somebody um, to come and fill vacant positions and that works particularly when in housekeeping and chefing where again there's, there's quite a crisis out there for, for those type of positions in our industry so again i think it's rewarding people it's about being what you are people do join our company because we, we, we we're well respected on user generated content such as trip advisor they think yeah. i'd like to be part of a company they, they do that yeah. i'd like to be part of a company that gives two days or for, for me to go and do volunteer days i'd like to be with a company that pays well i mean we i think we pay fair i think at the top i'm sure we're not but we, but we pay very fair yeah. on what we do um yeah you know, and to care about what we do and what about TripAdvisor then, just on that point? Because you sort of the kings of it. Yeah. And I think it went back again to ensuring that every single guest is treated they want the way they want to be doing it and empowering the team to do it. I'm not doing it. Um, it is the team. So making sure within reason we do whatever we can to make that guest day a great one. And but there's no shortcuts there. I mean people yeah. say to me, well how do you, you know, remain positions one, two and three in London? Is that, is that what it is right now? It has been for ten years. For ten years the top three properties have been forty one milestone interesting in that kind of order. And then the others are all in the the top 10 anyway so and he said but it's because the teams are fired up to work hard and yet we we do screw up and i want to sit here and go oh, you're a perfect company they never get we get things wrong but it's also then the way you react to getting things yeah. wrong and not just burying your hand in the sand yeah, yeah. And, and i'll get involved if we get a complaint um nine times out of ten um if it's a complaint that's or any complaint serious but i will want to phone that guest because the problem with getting into emails and it, it can be i think i think talking to someone finding out what happened yeah. is really the best way now a few yeah. guests perhaps don't want to talk about it but most do most actually want to tell you what that experience was so i think again is everybody understanding the importance of where we are and how we do it yeah. very much from me downwards and that's supported again by the family that they own the hotel tells i mean just i get asked all the time about how did they do it whether and that's what i keep saying there's no shortcut there's no jack in this and you know and trip advisor a bit of bad press lately about you can you know work your way to the top you can't you just can't you know and it's it's unbelievable and when i started working with yourselves and then i realized that you know you were in those positions i was like what how what? it was almost a bit like a company of your size and you, I, I, you not this is going to come out wrong but I was like you've got no business being you know how did you marry you know surely it should be the Dodge, you know one of these you know iconic was like, places, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah you're just yeah. like what the you know and then once you figure that out you're just like wow and and then it's hard to get knocked off of that right well, you know once you're there and you just keep on keeping on but I think the other thing with you guys as well was you encouraged people to right. post so the mistake that so many operators make, and this isn't hotels, this is across the board, let's not push it because if it's a bad review, then... Da, 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 and it's just like, look, just get everyone to put it up there because, if, as you were saying earlier on brilliantly, if it's a good one, engage with them and push it even further. If it's a bad one, you've got a chance to fix it. Funnily enough, and, and I might have said this in a, a podcast maybe last week actually, it's the ones in the middle that will kill you. So, if someone's had a great experience, everything's good. You know, double down on that. If someone's had a bad experience, then you've got a chance to turn that around. And what had happened was my wife went to a famous Italian restaurant um, lately with all her teacher mates. And there was about 20 of them or whatever. Two had a great meal. Two had a very bad meal. 16 in the middle had a meh meal. And it was not cheap. 
and 16 people have went away going, that was a waste of money. And it's those 16 that just every time that percentage, that's what will shut that place. Yeah, and you're yeah. just going, oh, because that that's the ones that won't review either way. They'll just slowly go into obscurity and they'll never stay again. That's exactly know. right. And anyone ever says to me after a meal or after a stay, they've had a good stay. I start to worry. Mm. I get really worried because that word good just doesn't crack it. And and I was with a, a restaurant group the other week and they said something brilliant, which was, um, you know, at the end of your meal and they say, uh, how was your meal? And then as you say, oh, fine. Oh. What they started to ask, which I thought was brilliant, was what could we have done better today? And I thought that twist was just incredible because then you're saying to that person, you know, and you don't want to put them on the spot if they've really got nothing. But if you really, it just, it really matters to me, what could I have done? I just thought that was genius. Yeah. Because even if one in 10 give you something, it's better than zero people giving you anything, you know? So I just thought, oh, it's so clever. Yeah. So yeah, so I thought thought that was absolutely brilliant. So what about you being on social media, mister? <laughs> I dabble, I dabble. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, so I, I just I learn more about the company on social than I do sitting in my chair. Are you snooping? <laughs> snooping. It's a, I think it's just taking an interest, seeing what's out there, making sure that I recognise some of the good um, that's there, doing some applause to it. Um, the old posts are, I'll put up of some relevance and... Yeah, and Instagram, of course, I think is probably the biggest one out there. I do a bit of posting, and they're all important. Facebook, they've all got their their place. I'm certainly no expert, mm. um, but I, I want to be engaged, and I, and I insist that all our properties engage. And I I've got a great belief in life that you've got to practice what you preach. Mm-hmm. So if I'm telling all of my guys to be busy yeah. making sure the hotels have their champions, making sure they're posting, making sure they're doing bits, I I do need to be in the background. I think ensuring I'm doing something. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Yeah, I, th- I think that that is important and um it shows that you know i'm seeing things i'm liking things and i'm part of this team mm. well i think it was rather sweet uh the other day i think you posted <laughs> up a good luck message to someone who'd broken their foot right yeah, Malcolm. That's Malcolm Hendry, the manager of yeah. the Rupers of 41. That's right. So he sent me a WhatsApp picture, actually. He said, I've uh, I've done this to my foot. So I actually, tongue-in-cheek, put it onto social media. But, you know, I wanted to say, I'm with him. It's looked damn painful. And I, I wished him there. I like him very much. So I was upset to see it. But, yeah, of course I care. So I, A, liked it. B, retweeted it. C, I've shown that to about 20 CEOs in the last, whenever you posted it saying this is employee engagement mate (laughs) this is what you do you know this is someone that really cares Um, so I thought it was brilliant there's not many people would do that by the way so that was amazing that was the cracker you know so whether it was tongue in cheek or not it was a very good one (laughs) so that was really cool Um, so what's next then 2019 must be on your mind already no I think one mustn't get carried away and start thinking where are we for 19 where are we for 20 you're as good as your last day every guest that checks out tonight that's job done we've got guests coming in today so i'm i i very much keep feet on the floor and don't get too far ahead because no one knows exactly what's out there mm. and uh, that's very much the message to team there's lots of things that we can't affect so you know what's What's new is we want to become even better than we are. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure from the employment engagement side of it, we're doing all we possibly can there. We want to be pleasing and delighting each and every guest. We want to remain relevant too. I mean, a slight um, issue, again, I have with myself is that I've been in this job now uh, for for many years and many of my team have. And Mm -hmm. so you think, hang on a minute, I don't want to get stale. So um, I steal a lot of things, Mark. I'm a big stealer. You mentioned going out now and taking photographs of food, etc. Sure, we all do that. But I go and try new places. I, I, I don't do as well as I used to but like 15 years ago I was reading like a business book every single uh, week another one another one another and I needed to find simple ones because my brain was kind of going a bit whizzy as to what was good and what was bad Um, but 
I think always looking to where you can do better, but not getting too far a- ahead of yourself. Mm. And um, I still today challenge myself to read uh, a business book every month. I-, I fail sometimes by a month or so, but every year I'll have read new ones and I, I like the easier ones. Um, Anyone's inspiring you at the yeah, moment? Yeah. Um, Oh, yeah. I mean, top of my head, again, I like the, the simpler ones. So um, I'm not saying the authors are simple, but I like the easier ones to read. So um, Jeff Ram, who does Celebrity Service, uh, again, um, he put a nice piece actually recently about Red Carnation News Book. So again, oh, thanks nice. for that, Jeff. Um, Michael Heppel, again, he's a mate on how to be brilliant. Um, again, a simple book, but very easy to do. And then probably my 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 mentor from far and a guy that uh, i chased down about 15 years ago um so much so and i'm just going to hold it back for one second on this but i'd uh, i'd heard about him and read about him mm-hmm. and he's got restaurants in new york and so i thought i've got to go and eat in these restaurants and his name's danny mayer and i got on a flight on the thursday to go to new york and i ate lunch dinner friday lunch dinner saturday lunch dinner sunday lunch dinner monday in all of his restaurants having read the brilliant brilliant setting the table it's 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 a must read business book for anybody in the food and drink business Mm. and i really liked it so i wrote him a letter and i said to him uh dear danny i'd read the book and uh i wanted to try your restaurants to make sure they're as good as the book and they were they were fantastic and um i didn't didn't get a response which was like the biggest disappointment of my life so i wrote another letter and some a PA or assistant wrote back and said, that's very kind of you, Jonathan. Thanks very much. That wasn't good enough for me. I needed more. So I continued to chase this man down. And anyway, eventually he never had enough of me and he did respond. And I managed in 2012 to get him across to come and do um, a a, a keynote at uh, the master in holders speech. And uh, he did an hour on his side of what hospitality meant to him, which was exactly what I thought I was doing. But I think at the time he was doing it much better. Mm-hmm. So, again, I learned from him. And he then became a fan of Red Carnation Hotels. And he's been to about six of our properties. Wow. And that's where he stays. And he recommends it. And uh, one, of, one of the greatest things in my life, because I hold this guy in so much esteem, was um, he, he tweeted that uh, Red, his last day at Red Carnation was an 11 out of 10 experience which was fantastic coming from that man and he suggested that uh, people knew his book better than he knew his book (laughs) wow so he he he, he's an unbelievable uh, man um so yeah it's those type of things but it's it's simple simple things that understand that resonate with the way i think we're doing things and learning from that and as i say that for me what's in the future for 19 well the future for 19 is just making sure that we do the right things, you know, you, that we're not, you know, we're not going to be putting mirror balls in our rooms and making flashing lights. It's just not what we do. Yeah. Um, it's listening to our guests. We learn from our guests. We learn from our members of the team. Mm. I, I, I speak to members of, uh, of, of Raycon and team all of the time because they see, they hear more than I'll ever see. I talk to clients as much as I can. I host dinners with clients and I get somebody to try and spike the dinner up for them to say, right, tell me more about, you know, what we could do better at Red Carnation yeah. because that is the way you learn. Yeah. And I try also, Mark, not to worry about the hotel that's next door or the hotel that's a mile away because actually I can't do anything with that hotel. Yeah. It's about what I can. And I think that's also important. Wake up every day and do what you can at your property. Yeah um and in in all of the properties and give the support and 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 a question i always like to ask my managers um which is similar to the one you mentioned about the restaurant now is what more can i do for you to make your job an easier one yeah and are they responsive to that have they got they got give yeah. you a list of things yeah. and, and when they come to me and a few of them quoted me back and say Jonathan you know you asked me that question I always say yes and it's sort of the lead in before can I have this can I have that yeah. So, and I want them to be using it with their teams I want that to flow down yeah, I want yeah. the guy that's you know washing the pots the, the person that's cleaning the bedrooms the, these really really important people to the business also to being asked that question you know he's probably got a uh, a scouring pad that's six months old and doesn't scare maybe yeah. and yeah. He, he must have a scouring what, yeah. that would make his job easier yeah. or we need this it's it, it's so important that everybody yeah. feels valued yeah. and and back to the employee engagement you know nothing drives me crazier than asking perhaps a, a some a roommate you know what's your job and and, and he or she says oh I, i'm just a roommate yeah. and they're, they're part of the team and without that we're nothing yeah. and uh you know and i think that value as well if i can just carry on chirping for one minute is again culture of our team is that 
the standard is that myself downwards the general managers we go back into the operation twice a year and it's it's back to the floor we call it in your shoes and so we will ensure that we are doing a job which doesn't involve sitting behind a desk or sitting with a guest drinking in the bar it's about doing the actual job itself yeah. and there is nothing mark nothing harder than cleaning 10 plus minus bedrooms a day it is the hardest job in the world on a busy service night when there's 300 plates or whatever it is pots and pans and they've yeah. got to be washed up and you've got a chef that's under pressure screaming for things and you've got it, it's an amazing buzz but one's got to understand yeah. the whole thing at base level to really appreciate it and respect it and what have you got a favorite job though well, the favourite job, because it's the hardest job, as I've mentioned, is, is, is the housekeeping side yeah, of it. Know. I mean, I've got one little story, if I, I may tell. Do it, yeah. So I, I was there uh, a few months ago now, and I was in my uh, in my housekeeping overalls, and I was there at eight o'clock with the team, and, and the head housekeeper was giving the brief as to what we were doing in, in our rooms, and it was, Jonathan, uh, I'm going to put such and such with you. And I said, well, no, I don't need that. I'm, I'm here to do my rooms are you sure she said and she was a bit nervous about me being there really cleaning rooms yeah. so and i was you know going mad up here and i was going to do this so i went to do some rooms eight o'clock and about 10 10 30 the floor housekeeper says uh mr raggett i said no i'm jonathan today yeah. uh, it's it's break time now and uh i said okay so i won't have my break and i i then discovered that uh, most of the housekeeping team has cleaned about five rooms by 10 30 i was still on my second and that wasn't even finished the day went on and we got to lunchtime, uh, midday, half past 12. And I think I'd done three rooms and my fourth was almost there. And I said to the housekeeper, should I just finish this room off before I have lunch and I'll come down for lunch? She said, no, no, we go for lunch now. Come back and do that immediately afterwards. There's no real pressure to get that room back. So, so there I was and I went and had lunch with everybody. And then they, they, they done really all of their rooms. They'd done seven, eight rooms and I've just done my fourth. Anyway. I went back to my room half an hour later to finish it off. And I, I just about cleaned the whole thing. I'm 98% clean. And these two guests walk in. And I said, oh, I said, uh, I'm sorry, but there's, there's been a mistake. And this room isn't ready yet. And I'm very sorry. Let me call down to reception and uh, I'll get you taken back. To which point, and it will always live with me. It's, it's a dying out story now. The lady says, you don't understand, little man. <laughs> so I said, well, I'm sorry, I don't understand, but the room isn't ready. And she said, you still don't understand. I said, no, I don't. She said, we occupied this room last night and the reception have told us we can have a late checkout. Oh, no. <laughs> and there were so many lessons to me there because we always have everybody practice a yes, I can attitude. So, of course, when a guest wants to extend their stay... The general rule is that, yes, you can extend your stay. But, of course, that then comes into communication to ensure that all the teams know about it. And we'd fallen down quite badly by not telling the housekeepers. And then it made me think later that, actually, how often does that happen? Because it's not great. But then that person that's cleaned the room and spent all that time has then got to go back and do it again. Again. And are we kind of rewarding them for actually doing it? And, And it wasn't. So I went away from this and my head was, I was confused. I was happy. In many ways, we said yes to the guests because that's what we need to do. It's about. I was cross that we hadn't communicated that process. I was damn angry. I had to clean that room again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And (laughs) cold with the man. And and do it. But it was a good lesson in life. And I think it's that kind of experience that unless you're actually doing it and understanding it, you you don't really know. Um, Well, I I happened to meet your sushi, you know, um, and and Pret as well. They, They put you back to the floor, you know, quite rightly. And the things that you learned by be you know by being in the kitchen and serving things to customers and it just made it a much more three sixty view and you know and I, a little bit sort of salty the other day when I was um, you know presenting a, a, a speechy thing where I started going you know if your marketing managers are sitting in a head office and not just working from your properties twenty four seven they should be fired it was a bit much I mean it was maybe a bit dramatic but the but that was the point. It was like, how can they know anything? You know, if you're maybe maybe not so much hotels, I don't know, but restaurants for sure, pubs for sure. You know, you're just going, what are they doing sitting in a head office? 
and I think you know the whole. I mean, we we talk about employee engagement. We talk about people being in the same team, but the the banter, the memories, the whole experience is great for many many months almost because people remember you for it. Mm-hmm. And I think you know certainly I uh, myself and managers do. You you get in there and you give a hundred percent. I can't make a bed as well or as quickly as as a housekeeping staff, but that actually doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, and I was in the kitchen. And you like my story, so oh, sorry. Okay, fine. Yeah. Yeah. But so I was in the kitchen. This one does make me laugh. And I decided I was going to do a Sunday morning breakfast in a hotel because they're always the most exciting. No one gets out of bed on time. Everyone yeah. comes in the last hour. So um, this is actually the Chesterfield Hotel in Mayfair. So uh, I'm there Sunday morning, six thirty in the morning. I've got my sausages, my bacon, my mushrooms, my tomatoes, my black pudding. I am ready for action, Mark. I've got to tell you, nothing is going to stop me telling everyone I'm the best chef at breakfast ever. Different. Which, of course, not. <laughs> so by 8 o'clock, I've served about five breakfasts. And this hotel's got 220 guests staying that night. So I'm a little bit concerned, but I knew people were going to come in late. By 9 o'clock, we've done like, maybe 20 breakfasts. So we've got a couple of hundred to do. And, of course, 9.01, there's 10 checks on. 9.15, there's more checks on for these cooked breakfasts. Unbeknown to me, the deputy general manager is on duty that weekend, walking the tables, saying to the guests good morning how are you i hope you're going to have a lovely breakfast what i'd like to say to you is i'd like to recommend the mayfair favorite champions breakfast so the guests would say well what on earth is that and he said it's eggs benedict (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> All right. so i'm in the kitchen there mark and it's 9 30 and i've got about 50 orders for eggs benedict on the check and of course i'm not ready for this uh, am i so i had two chefs from the kitchen come down and they're making it yeah, and helping oh, me get through God. it and i was in the right mess but it was the, it was the laugh because the you know i, I couldn't cope i got in a mess the, the deputy chair was being naughty because we normally do about six and we, we did 64 we did on that day because he's got a, he's got a done his bit there but it's it's that morale it's the camaraderie yeah. and the guests were happy they got their best breakfast the chefs it. laughed at me because i couldn't cope but they know why i didn't cope but it's it's just it's remember in fact it's not remembered for weeks it's remembered for years that type of thing <laughs> so a couple of final things then i'm thinking um so you talked about danny it's mayor or meyer how do you say it mayor mayor so a quick point on that have you seen his podcast with gary vaynerchuk that's worth watching. So it's a video on YouTube, and he does about an hour and okay. ten with him. Oh, good. It's really good. So it was very cool. Um, so you talked about him saying what hospitality meant to him. So what does it mean to you? How would you describe that if you haven't covered it already? Um, well, I think hospitality, and this is really stolen from Danny, actually, is that... Um, is being on the side of the guests. So when a guest comes through, you, you're not see, you know, trying to make things difficult. You're understanding what they need. You're looking, you're looking really quite calm and measured. And, and he uses this great analogy um, of, of a swan, and that fifty-one uh, percent of uh, the mass of a swan is uh, below the water, and it's doing all the work that's needed. Mm. And then forty-nine percent is the graceful neck and everything else. And how you've got to really be looking graceful for above and yeah. believe is it's all happening and keeping that whole calmness yeah. um and it's just delivering just just being right about what you do and looking after people i mean as i say there's no people i think sometimes make this business harder than it really is i mean it is a very obvious one when people mess up myself included you need to be you know told that's not right and need to be doing something about it but when people get so many things right each day then all the time but just to actually say thank you and to recognize and to do something about it it makes people feel fantastic you know i write you know a dozen letters a week or so to members of the team that often i've been tipped off have done a great job just a, of a thank you it takes yeah. me no time because i've got a wonderful pa staff who writes them for me and i sign them but that feeling of recognition of of being on the same side of you know feeling proud about what they do is is where we are and 
you know, I, I, I won't have that shouting and screaming and some of that TV chef stuff in particular and a certain Scottish man, I might say. That, <laughs> I mean, there's no place for that. And, you know, we mm. talk about attracting people into this business. Yeah. It's It's got to be professional. It's got, it's got to be yeah. done in the right way. So, yeah. you know, getting that whole vibe of, uh, of people enjoying what they do and feeling recognised and giving people opportunity to do better and to be trained and to advance in their career. And yeah. be it with Red Carnation, be it with another company, you know, that's fine actually i've got to a stage in life now where as long as they're in hospitality and hotels i'm really very happy about that yep. because you know if we've done a small part in their life to, to for them to move on and, and do well that's great yeah. um that, that's 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 kind of what it is so uh, it's i just i, I can't bear complacency mm-hmm. i can't bear people that you know don't have energy um i just <laughs> It's a bit cliche, this, but when you're in a hotel and you're front of house, it's a stage performance. You've got to get out there and you've yeah. got to be on your game. Yeah. You've got to do things right. And, you know, I often say to people, if they don't like it and they don't want to do it, then please, please leave. Yeah. I don't want people doing me the favour. Yeah, yeah. And the reason that we've done well at Red Carnation, we've been recognised and we do well on all this UGC, is because we have, for the most part, a team of people that want to be what there. And, you know, know we want people to use guest names so we explain why we want them to use guest names because not everybody necessarily would know but that's one of the things we do to make eye contact again it's an important thing so we train on that so it might sound obvious but actually it isn't obvious i mean if you you, how often do you give your credit card and and your name's used very rarely but the fact that we do do that actually gives you the edge so it's all these type of things and if someone can't be bothered to do it then i don't think i can actually be bothered to have them too we can make mistakes and perhaps not do it yeah. Um, you know, when you come into one of our bars, our wine, our drink are quite expensive. They're five star prices. So don't just say, do you want red or white wine? Well, let's show the choice of wines. We've got 20, 30 glasses of red wine by the glass. Yeah. And some of it's very expensive. Don't judge the book by its cover. Let's tell the guests if about the wine. Yeah. And if it's £150 for a great glass of wine know about it so let's yeah. train our team to know what that is a they're interested in it they feel confident about yeah. it and not everybody's going to have one but if with one guest in a hundred or has a glass there mm-hmm. it's it's a wow wow moment it's a bit like a wine list you've got your house wines which are jolly tasty but when somebody orders a bottle of chateau margot for thousands of pounds yeah. hooray hooray for the guests because they're going to enjoy it. we're going to do it right hooray for the team hooray for it it makes the job interesting yeah. and i think i think that i've always felt that as well if i was just coming to yours for a drink I've never felt unwelcome, you know, and um, and I went into some the other night, um, just a normal pub, and actually my friends and my luggage was in the place, and I was going in, and this young guy, you know, came up to me like a bouncer, <laughs> you know, and he was like, uh, it, what, you you just come in for the toilet? No, I'm coming in, because my friends are here, I've got a drink on the table, actually, I'm with your MD as well, uh, you know, I was just like, mate, back off. Mm-hmm. You know, I might look a certain way, I might be dressed like I'm trying to be 14. Doesn't matter. <laughs> just, you know, as you say, don't judge someone. Like, you just don't know who I am. So, yeah, so I think that's always a pleasing thing about you guys. And then on a previous podcast episode, there was a whole section on the Edgerton sip, was, uh, the martini sip, which was fun. This was really good <laughs> with you. Um, and then the last thing I was going to leave it on was. Yeah, just um, one tip for for leadership. I thought maybe quite interesting as well. Just again, if it was something that you maybe feel you hadn't covered, you know, just sure. to be a strong leader. I think um, consistency is really important. Mm-hmm. I think people understanding where they are mm-hmm. um, in, in the, and I, I mentioned the, the whole objectives and people really understanding what's wanted from them. I think yeah. bad leadership is today you want this and tomorrow you want that. I think having a, a clear direction is important. Understanding our business, it moves a bit, but there has to be a, a thread there. I think caring, I think, yeah. I think passion is important. I think understanding people, leading from the front. There should be no job that I can't do. Um, not quite as well, but you would do. Yeah. Um, and I, I can't, st- I cannot stand snobbery. Yeah. Um, I think you know, it, it, it's one team and really believing that you know, there's no I in team is, is one of the things that we say. We're all in this together yeah. and we'll be successful together or we will possibly fail. And, and, and people recognizing that. And, you know, again, 
going backwards. We're not, you know, we'll do a few jobs throughout the year or we'll join the team. We'll recognize it. We'll walk around. That's what I enjoy in this job. I, I came into it because I love first thing in the morning to go through in the kitchen and see that breakfast chef prepare for his eggs benedict or whatever he is. Seeing the, the mess from the last night all cleared up and ready for action again. Off we go. I love seeing guests coming back into our hotels time and time again that become of course they're guests but they become friends and they're, they're interesting and you keep learning and you learn from them and it makes you more of an interesting person so you know I, I think a leader needs to be able to communicate clearly with the guests in the hospitality certainly with his team even more importantly be consistent of what you do and, and be likable I mean you're not going to be everyone's best mate but you don't have you can be pleasant and yeah. fair and, and earn respect that way yeah. as opposed just to be you know evil and i think there are people out there that actually enjoy doing that i, I for one I, i'm not one of those i've never understood that you know i don't think you have to be a yeah i don't think you have to be a horror i, I think, think you can be kind as well as strong yeah you know and you know kindness mustn't be looked at as weakness and there's a line there but yeah. you know the best leaders i know out there have those traits i are not the ones that are screaming and shouting and thumping and yeah. uh, and uh, behaving badly that's definitely a last resort the first is what well jonathan thanks so much that's um that's been an amazing hour and a bit so thank you, Mark. Thank you. that's just been enlightening and yeah here's to 20 more years so thank you so much i've really enjoyed it thank you thank mark you. so there you have it this warm glow from such a wonderful and generous individual mr jonathan raggett who's the md at red carnation hotels Jonathan really does care about his people and his customers in equal measure and really gives a guest experience, which in my eyes is second to none around the world. A huge thanks also to everyone who has reviewed, rated and subscribed to the Spectacular Marketing Podcast. We're seeing some really good chart positions and we really, really are blown away and can't believe our luck. Thanks to everyone who is telling just one more person about the podcast is making a huge difference. A huge thank you also to Gaz, Gabby and Michal for helping us put the Spectacular Marketing podcast together every single week. I'm Mark McCulloch and this was Spectacular. Spectacular.